With 7,000 impeccably dressed racing enthusiasts in attendance and Olympic star Penny Alexiak performing the ceremonial call, the Queen's Plate will once again grace the Woodbine Racetrack in Ontario this Sunday. Here's a rundown on the event's history and traditions and our first Queen's Plate Parley pick of the day. It's the first leg of the Canadian Triple Crown and North America's oldest continually run race, the Queen's Plate, returns this Sunday as 13 hopefuls battle it out over one and a quarter miles on the Woodbine Tapita. Now, in its 162nd edition, the $1 million Queen's Plate will be hotly contested with the most open race in years. But with news that Ontario owner and breeder Sam Sun Farm is dispersing its stock after a glorious 50-year legacy, Dan Samo would be a popular winner on the day. The Geldings family already boasts three previous plate winners and another on Sunday would be a sixth for Sam Sun Farm. And the case for Dan Samo looks even stronger with Patrick Husbands at the reins. Eight-time winner of the Sovereign Award for Canada's Outstanding Jockey, Husbands is a multiple Queen's Plate winner and boasts 3,500 career victories with earnings approaching $170 million. At plus 1,200, these odds are too good to pass up, so Dan Samo is the parlay pick to win the Queen's Plate this weekend. From one Canadian horse racing dynasty to another, yesterday Sarah caught up with Woodbine's Ren Carruthers to talk about a family affair taking center stage this Sunday and to discover her top pick for this year's Queen's Plate. So there's six horses in the race with connections to the Adderd family. Is there a favorite among the six pack? Actually, my top pick is one of the Attard Barn uh, trainees. And yes, like you're saying, you've got Kevin Attard in there. He's got four horses. Uh, and then you have Sid Attard, who's his uncle. And then his dad's got a horse in there, Tino. So it, it, it's it's pretty uh, it, it's pretty impressive to see them represented so prolifically. A fun fact for you is that the Attards have never won a Queen's Plate, wow. at least not as a jock, or not at least not as a trainer. Actually, as a jockey, Larry Attard won uh, back in the day, and that was uh, was I think it was 1983, and that was aboard Bompago. So okay. it's kind of fun to think of it from that perspective. They're still trying to get that trading score. Uh, but yeah, I definitely like uh, one of the Atard horses on top. Do you want me to say who now or should we wait? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay, the number two Harlan Estate, 12 to one on the morning line. Um, there's a lot to like about this horse and we can get into that more extensively. But the short of it is this is a horse who, I, you know, I, I, my one question might be, Distance because he's by Canthero, so he's out of an arch mare though, an arch won the Super Derby at a mile and a quarter. So you've got the pedigree credentials that you could get the distance. Uh, it's a really prolific family too. For anybody who knows pedigree, the name Stormbird should mean something. The name Northern Net, that's part of this family from which she hails. And Northern Net herself actually, back in I think 1977, she was second in the Queen's Plate. So that's kind of fun there. Now I thought he put in a really nice performance Last out, he actually beat one of the fellow entrants in here, Dance Samo, got up by a nose over him. It was a really exciting photo finish. But what really, really impressed me is if you look at the times set in that race, it was slowly run. He was hanging multiple lengths back at one point, five or so lengths back, and he still managed to close for the win. It's very hard for horses to do that when there's not an honest pace in front of them. And yet he got up there got his nose on the wire. I think he can get the distance. I also do think it is encouraging that you see Kimura riding Harlan Estate. Kimura had also been aboard uh, one of the other Kevin Attard horses in HC Holiday. So uh, again, I think this is a really nice horse. Something else that I do think is noteworthy is he had been running for Peter Erton's barn out in California. And in one of his performances, he had actually finished fifth, but beaten only four and a quarter lengths because beaten ranks lengths are relative. You could be seventh and maybe you were only beaten two lengths. Um, but that race, was the Pasadena, it was won by Rock Your World. Rock Your World next put up a hundred buyer figure winning the Santa Anita Derby over your eventual Kentucky Derby winner, Medina Spirit. So you've got some class lines in there. Obviously, uh, they just moved this horse to Kevin Attard because he's eligible to run in the Queen's Plate and he's got enough credentials to think he could get the job done. So that is going to be my top pick. Originally set to feature 17 contestants, the Queen's Plate field eventually narrowed to 13 horses, changing the dynamic of the starting lineup and the odds in the process. 
So here's Jackie on what that meant for the race and who's caught her eye in the build-up to Sunday's main event. With news that the heavily favored Weyburn was out of the running, the 2021 Queen's Plate blew wide open. Here are my three top picks for Sunday's showdown at Woodbine. In an optional claiming race at Woodbine back in July, Riptide Rock was incredible. Starting from the inside rail to the outside in the final furlong with an explosive turn of foot. But at a much longer one and a quarter miles, does he have the legs for Sunday? At six to one, I'm saying yes. Tidal Force has won its first two races in style, but has underperformed since, leading to pretty long odds at 12 to one. But take a closer look. This horse has beaten Harlan Estate and Sunday's favorite Keep Grinding. And finally, a big horse with the energy to match. Safe Conduct is pretty much as safe as they come at five to one. Not least because of jockey Irad Ortiz. Still, without a doubt, the best in the biz. So here are my Queen's Plate Parlay picks. Riptide Rock at six to one, Tidal Forces at 12 to one, and save conduct at five to one. Thanks, Jackie. The Queen's Plate isn't the only race at Woodbine this weekend, with several additional stakes running alongside the main event. Let's go to Noor for one more pick from a packed day of racing. Alongside the Queen's Plate this Sunday, the Dan Smartly Stakes will see seven fillies and mares, three years and older, all competing for $175,000. Named after the 1991 Canadian Triple Crown winning superstar, Dan Smartly is a grade two race battled out on Woodbine's one and a quarter EP Taylor Turf course. And a standout contender this year is Blame Debbie, who was sent out by multiple graded stakes winning trainer Graham Motion. After a debut win in 2019 at Delaware Park, the well-traveled Bay assembled a 4-1-3 mark from 13 career starts. And the first stakes win in the Grade 3 Root and Riddle Dowager last October, as well as a win at the Searching Stakes this past June to start her 2021 campaign, the Kentucky Bread Philly is looking for a strong showing over the Toronto Oval Grass. Take Blame Debbie as my parlay pick at 4-1 at the Dance Smarty Stakes this Sunday. Thanks, Noor, and thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed our Queen's Plate preview, and good luck for a great day of racing at Woodbine this Sunday.